Let's get nuts. Okay, okay. What? Hey, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. So, like half the people on this planet, I got to see The Flash early, since WB is showing literally anyone, including Z-list YouTube cucks like myself, The Flash early. To generate that positively charged buzz, the electrifying word of mouth, the big box office numbers. Some have called it one of the best superhero movies ever made. Flash, which people are going to see, is just one of the greatest movies ever made. Was that just a marketing tactic, or was it genuinely their truth? I really could not tell you. I think a lot of you will love this movie, genuinely. I'm not just saying that so you go easy on me in the comments. I think it's a very, very, very fun time. The definition of a popcorn big blockbuster that actually has scale to it. Every big movie markets itself as the biggest movie ever made, but The Flash does feel grand. It feels like an epic comic book event in a way that a lot of its competitors do not. But for me, The Flash also gives us a glimpse into the future. A future where all these films hit the studio mandated bullet points, retreading the same course that we we've seen our favorite caped heroes run for the last decade. I think a lot of us, definitely me, thought that maybe, just maybe, this would be the start of a new era for DC. Even though James Gunn is taking over, I was holding out hope that this movie would be different, feel different. But no. The Flash is brimming with potential, showing us nothing new and expecting the least out of us. I want to run with Barry Allen, root for that character to be able to win his races alone without the likes of a Batman, two Batmen by his side. But if anything, The Flash proves, solidifies why DC has been running in circles for so long. They can't drop the baggage of what's come before and can't quite figure out what size shoe to wear. But first, this video is brought to you by my feature-length Jason Todd fan film. The full trailer will be coming out in the next week or so, so please hit that notification bell. Ooh, I've never said that before. That That's gross. And please, 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 please let me know what you think of it when the trailer is live. Listen, I've been working on this movie for the past three years. Night and day, I have died and been reborn like Jason in order to make something truly special. It's, it's honestly my entire heart and soul on the screen. Batman is in it. Robin is in it, but this is a story about trauma, about abuse, and about how to cope with those horrible feelings of longing in such an uncaring world. The movie was financed by you guys and your love of the character, and I cannot thank you enough for allowing me to tell Jason's story. Much more to come. Hit that notification bell, ooh, and stay tuned. Thanks, guys. When the Flash works best is when it feels like a classic episode of Justice League. Truthfully, this film is the closest in tone on a surface level to what Bruce Timm, Paul Dini, Dwayne McDuffie, and the rest of the animated universe team managed to accomplish back when I was a little high top. It feels like most of this film was conceived back when WB had faith that Justice League was going to be a smash hit. Wow, it's like a cave. It feels like a love letter to everything that really worked about what Snyder did with these characters, while ignoring all the murder and bloodshed that came along with them. I will fucking kill you. It feels like a love letter to that tone, that era of DC, but also still keeps its focus heavily on Barry Allen. This is his movie, and never forgets that even if it had the impossible task of baiting the general audience into giving a shit by using Batman. Speaking of, Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton are both great, man. Even if they aren't given the most meat to chew on, they show up, seemingly not just for the paycheck. Ben said something somewhere about finally figuring out how to play the character to the best of his ability, and I think we see that. He has like two scenes, but those moments feel very Batman. Not a complete detachment from what he did with Zack, but an evolution that works. And Keaton reminds us why he was the first to take the dark, unhinged, psychotic approach to the character. Sasha Kaye steals the show as Supergirl. She probably has like 10 or so lines, but I really adored the way she played this Kara. So different from what I'm used to seeing. A Imagining, but there's something truthful within her. If you're going to keep anything in the new DC, keep her, man. Cinematographer Henry Bram does the best he can, bringing his experience shooting heavy CG action spectacle but intimate character moments with James Gunn on Guardians and Suicide Squad. His photography makes the multiverse treading adventure feel like a Flash comic book. Stylized, kinetic, constantly moving, he tries his best to make us feel as uncertain, unsure, and frantic as Barry does. 
and the script has a lot going for it thematically. There are so many ideas that I adore that I would have loved to see explored more. Keaton's Batman having nothing to live for outside the cave, this pathetic, lifeless, hermit Batman forced to deal with a Gotham that does not need him. What is he without Batman? He's nothing. A shell, a lunatic, a lost soul. A distant traveler, the ultimate immigrant, sent here to protect her infant cousin, only to be kept in captivity by our cruelty, yet still choosing to embody hope, protect us even if we aren't worthy of her kindness. And a young man like me, like a lot of you, just trying to have the chance at happiness that was taken from him without reason, without sense. Does trauma always have to define the heroic? You have these three characters forged from pain who still choose to make the world, all the worlds, a better place. I love that so much. On paper, it's beautiful. Too bad most of that is just on paper, in concept, in theory, in my projection of what I wanted to see from the movie. None of this is explored outside empty monologues, empty moments. They drop the ball. They have three characters that all wish they could change, wish they could get back the loss that ended up defining them. Three characters defined by our capacity for apathy, for violence, that still believe in trying to make the world better for that young boy who misses his mom. Mom, that young kid in the alley, that young immigrant in that lifeboat. But instead, they use the screen time, the page count, to make empty callbacks to what worked in 1989. Keaton says all his hits, he uses all his retro futuristic tech, but he's surrounded by an empty Gotham, an empty world that lacks all the artistry of what Anton First and Tim Burton created decades ago. We never get nuts. We play unbelievably safe and simple. We just got Spider-Verse, man, which makes it its mission to explore how how and why loss, why grief, why scars define superheroes. We've gotten countless superhero movies that not only have this idea in their scripts, but take the time to fully explore them. Flash contains the most slim, basic rendition of that idea, even though it has every chance not to. Oftentimes, when the movie stops cracking jokes, when Barry 2 finally shuts the fuck up. <laughs> You catch a glimmer of that beauty. My favorite scene has already been released on YouTube. It's right here. When you found me in that hole that they put me in, and I wasn't kal why did you help me? Because you needed help. That's where the money is, man. That's the future of DC that I want. But on the flip side of that, you have everything that terrifies me about the future of comic book movies. Weightless action, horribly unfinished visual effects, trying to make up for, cover up, frankly, some god-awful costume set and visual design choices. Seeing Batman not be so grounded is definitely something I've dreamed of seeing. Hell, Andy even tried to give us the blue cape. But when Batman is soaring through the sky, I want to feel the gravity, the intensity, the power of that image. His Batman, visually speaking, feel like something pulled directly from the nightmares I've had about what an MCU Batman would look like. Let's get nuts. A costume that doesn't work in real life, mixed with overworked and tired VFX artists trying to do their best to compose an actor's face onto an undervalued stunt double. I want to have hope that Andy Machete's Brave and the Bold would show us something new, but my cynical dread is terrified that we will get something that feels very shallow, very safe. A lighter-hearted older Batman who opens himself up to partners to his Bat family can work, but it should not be at the expense of depth. Whatever Ezra Miller was thinking when giving their Barry 2 performance, I, don't, I, I can't even. I'm sorry, I don't mind humor, I really don't. I might be an emo fuckball, but truthfully, comedy can work so wonderfully in connecting with an audience when trying to bring levity and realness to an outlandish story, but dude. <laughs> I even think they are a great actor in other stuff. Even playing the main Barry here, they bring an emotional sensitivity to it that I think is magnetic. But I swear to the speed force, every single Barry 2 line seems like it was AI generated to be the most basic unfunny Gen Z but somehow outdated Vine-centric assault on my ears. Yeah. 
He's supposed to be annoying, but he's also supposed to be a reflection of a trauma-less Barry. Someone who is lighter, who is happy, who doesn't carry the weight of multiple worlds on their shoulders. I get it, trust me, I get it. But not having trauma does not equate to not having anything watchable, believable, genuine about yourself. Maybe it works for some of you, but it did not work at all for me. Taking the comedic relief from Justice League, taking the almost Wally West Barry Allen and making his childishness, his naivety, a response to not being able to connect with the world is a brilliant idea. Barry has the potential in a lot of ways to be the most human member of the Justice League. Ezra is doing their best and I think audiences will connect with Barry, but the script constantly lets the character down with the most predictable joke, sidestep, trip in every moment he should soar. Every chance he has to confront himself, both sides, both the hope in Supergirl and the pain in Batman. The movie rushes those scenes along in service of getting to the next beat of action, the next speckle of spectacle. Obviously, a film about The Flash should be quick in its pace, but sometimes even the fastest of us should take a moment to simmer in the emotion. I loved when the movie took a beat, a breath for those character moments, but too often the gravitas is undercut by the insecurity of the storytellers. Barry is the fastest man alive, which gives him the ability to see all of the perspectives that we can't, all the time in the world to feel the weight of his choices. I want them, the filmmakers, the storytellers, to trust us to feel as he does, not force us to clap to laugh at his expense. And worst of all, reviving dead actors for the sake of comic book fans everywhere to cheer, to clap, and for some of us to choke on our damn popcorn so we can join these legends in their grave as they roll over. All right, that might be a little too intense, but dude, I could not believe my eyes. It's like living in an episode of Black Mirror. Christopher Reeve, Adam West are back as hideous, disgusting, appalling caricatures of the soul they once brought to these characters. And it's cheap, man. A cheap, tasteless movie that I cannot believe made it in the final cut of the movie. Could they really not get Grant Gustin, John Wesley Ship? You know, cameos that are relevant to the actual film, cameos from actors who have carried the Flash run in his shoes with grace far longer than anybody on board this project has. Fucking Titans did a better trippy multiverse cameo fest using mostly stock footage. I couldn't tell you if every single cameo moment in the Speed Force was supposed to look like Marty's terrible nightmare of cinema's future. Maybe originally they went for photorealism and settled on PS2 pre-rendered cutscenes. Whatever, man. I'll shut up. But what's most important is that it did not need to be here. These cameos in no way affect Barry as an individual and actually serve to lessen the emotional impact of the finale. Ali, imagine having the potential for the ultimate man versus self moment. You have your protagonist faced with all their flaws, all their suffering right in front of them. The ultimate looking in a mirror moment and realizing that you are the cause, the pain, but you could also be the hope. And then undermining your own emotional gravity with fucking CG Nicolas Cage. You guys are goofsters. Have we not learned that this is the problem with blockbusters these days? The lack of faith in their characters, the need for the big moments outshining the intimacy, the truth, the realness? I guess not. Andy Muschietti seems like a nice enough guy. I really dug a lot of the first It film. I really think that getting horror filmmakers for superhero movies results in some very creative ideas. Look at James Wan, Sam Raimi, constantly evoking the most creativity per second per scene that you can. Let's be real. The fact that Andy managed to make something cohesive amidst the horrible studio management shakeups, bombs, and global pandemics is worthy of praise within itself. Who knows what this movie was like before all this? Originally, Keaton was Batman at the end, setting up for the Batgirl movie where he was a major player. Originally, Superman did not exist anymore. Supergirl was Superman. Originally, Ben Affleck was trapped in some kind of crisis on Infinite Earth setup. Originally, who fucking knows? But somehow, this movie feels cohesive and I'm a fan of his passion, but nothing on display here matches the soaring highs of the best of the genre. Recently, Matt Reeves gave us a DC movie that was smart, thoughtful, intimate. James Gunn gave us a comic book punk rock concert. 
Grant Gustin and the writers over at The CW delivered a truly beautiful, tender, and heartbreaking version of having to let your tragedy happen once more for the sake of saving a universe filled with never-ending pain. Delivered a version that isn't touched by what they do here. Despite what happened to that show, what it devolved into, I would not even put these two moments in the same league. One is as real as it can be given the time-traveling speedsters. One is slow, painful, tragic, raw, almost uncomfortable to watch. The other, despite some really solid performances, cannot sit with the grief long enough to evoke anything nearly as powerful. The irony is that the film The Flash can't sit still in any one thing, one idea, one emotion long enough. It's shooting itself in the foot at every turn, turning all the potential, all the hope, all the buzz into nothing more than a lightning bolt of could. It could have been this. It could have explored this. I see all the coulds right there in a kaleidoscope world of what if. In the multiverse of possibility and genuine care that I think a lot of the filmmakers behind the movie had. But much like Barry, I'm trapped. I know, I know, I'm aware that I'm known as the overdramatic, best thing ever, worst thing ever, treat these caped heroes as if they were real YouTuber. But all performative bullshit aside, I'm just a young filmmaker who wants these movies, films which have the most budget, the most resources, the most wide-reaching emotional potential to use every penny, every shot, every line, and every scene to tell a story that hits our core. And The Flash? is one of those films that has every ounce of momentum behind it to do that, to make an impact, but in my mind, consistently does not. To me, I felt nothing. And Barry? What does Barry feel in the end? Well, in the end, he still messes with time, giving himself the happiest ending he can afford to without rupturing time itself. Even though the entire point of the story the film is trying to tell, the lesson Barry is forced to learn is that you can't change the hand you've been given. You can't go back and fix the things that made you feel broken. You have to learn to live with them and live through them. We all have the capacity for that power. That might be humanity's greatest superpower. Even if the film, in its final moments, chooses to believe that we don't, that we can't, and that we will always end up back where we started. Running in circles, trying to make a difference, a statement, a change, while repeating the same mistakes that landed us here in the first place. There's a reason we have to restart with these characters, because the filmmakers have never trusted them enough to stand on their own, trusted us enough to believe in something truly new. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. This was, uh, I haven't done a negative one in a bit. Like I know, you know, know me as the negative Nancy of Spider-Man and stuff, but I really haven't talked negatively about something in a minute. Um, what did you think of The Flash? I like want to be convinced to like it more. So please uh, leave me a comment. Um, thank you guys. Have a lovely, lovely, lovely day.